Respect the words, they've already been respected, so respect your own words. Please allow us to have the opportunity to hear each word you're saying at a nice, slow pace. Then we'll hear their beauty. If, if you rush through them, we'll miss half of it. So I know it's a little scary, but you can do it and you'll be just fine. It is what we think that defines who we are and what we are willing to do. It is how we are able to elevate our minds and hearts to a new level that can give us the strength to release ourselves from the chains of timidity. In life, I've learned that our true reflections are only revealed when we are at a crossroads. These crossroads are the ultimate tests. They beg the questions, are you willing to change? And what risks are you willing to take? We must be able to find our way through time's cunning maze and not allow it to tamper with our present mindsets. If we dwell too deep into the past or worry too much about the future, we could get lost. We could lose our courage to risk changing our ways in order to overcome the obstacles life will throw at us. Thank you. This messy, beautiful life. Meet me at the crossroads and help me find myself. I've been stuck right here for days now. My limbs have stiffened up. You say that change is wonderful and risks, risks are necessary and beautiful, but sometimes I fail to see beyond my fear. Do I go left towards the terrifying beauty of the unknown or will I turn back to the monotonous comfort of your arms? Please, push me forward, let me go. I'll head into the darkness to find myself. It may be messy, I may fall, but you taught me to not be afraid. And now I know. I'll break down the walls, but put down my fists. Go left, even if everyone else goes right. I've gotten through the darkness, wiped the dust, dust off from my fall. Today I am a winner, even if I didn't soar. I found the strength of my own two feet, and now I know I can do more. I'm at a crossroads. I tend to venture down the middle of the two paths. I don't like choosing a path with a predetermined ending, a decided destination. I like to be down my own path, make my own footprints. There's a sense of pristine beauty in walking in snow that has just fallen. A philosopher once said that you can never cross the same river twice. It is always changing, always flowing. A tree changes as it ages. It grows, it develops. Does that mean it is no longer the same sycamore tree that you climbed as a kid? People change, but the physical makeup of them does not. His demeanor might change, but he's still, got, he's still got those blue eyes you tripped over back in April of last year. Encrucijada Crossroad. When I'm at a crossroad, I stop and say the word in Spanish. Encrucijada. I realize that in my language, it is more dramatic. It almost never defines two crossing roads, and it always refers to a conflict of interest, a problem. In both languages, it sounds like the word cross, cruz. Taking a decision, taking away is stepping out of the cross. Getting into the crossroad is being crucified. Then I get out of my language crossroad and look the full horizon of the roads. In front of a crossroad, en una encrucijada, I need to think with my legs and start walking. All road. Oh God, I feel like such an idiot right now. If I go back to look at the words I've just written, I'd feel so embarrassed, little. Okay, crossroads, crossroads. I stop, I stop, I stop at the crossroads. Look both ways before crossing. Why am I here? Who brought me here? I could stand at the crossroads all fucking day, waiting for it to be safe enough to cross. Lie, I lie, that's not even true. Who cares? Take risks. Risks mean, means crossing the road. Risk means showing up. Look both ways, then back again. Cross the fucking road. Home. A star, a faint yellow light in a distant galaxy. The howl that reaches for it, biting like cayenne pepper. A baby's reaction. A bright yellow cry for attention. The swift gliding of the nightgown rushing to answer the cry. The wisp of grey released by the calming whisper. 
the aroma of a fresh campfire outside, alerting the night of mischief afoot. The smooth reflection of the turquoise moon on the lake divides up the solid night. Like a balloon releasing air, a new idea sprang from my tongue. Over the salty distance, unending highways, bitter country roads, I returned to the place I once knew so well. The green sign illuminated by the headlights welcomes me back. I am led by the familiar scent of my father's cologne. Once enveloped by the aroma of fresh laundry, I can rest in the blanket that has come to represent the family I, knew, I know. The threads peeking out remind me why I left. The picture of the child on the mantle reminds me who I was before I had my own. The cold nose nuzzling my toes brings me to brings me to the new definition of home that I have created since I escaped the familiarity. The end of forever. It is the color of the lipstick she applies, ready for a night of dancing. He waits for her at the door, and when he sees her, it's the color that seizes his internal feelings. It's the color of her dress as, of her dress as she twirls, entrancing him even more, to the point of no return. When he takes her hand and leads her home, it's the color of her nail polish, imploring to be noticed. It surges through their bodies as they kiss, and it's the color of the heat provided by their wrestling in the bedroom. The glow of the candles, the promise of forever, the desperation of their passion. It is there the color resides. It's the color of the seal of the envelope containing the letter she left behind, and it's the color of his knuckles after punching the wall one too many times. It's the color of his anger and the color of her lust for another man. It's the swirl that forms when anger becomes revenge, and it's the color of her blood as she lies on the floor, forever motionless. It's the surge in his eyes realizing what he has done, and the aggression leaving his body. It's the color of his broken heart and her now lifeless one, but it will never be the color of both of their tears. Pink is born every second of every day. She is bundled in warm blankets of herself and placed in mother's arms, giving life to new cheeks. She is found in the bubble gum of baseball dugouts, the tool of Tutu's pirouetting in the ballet studio, the softness of a sunset, the shine of freshly painted fingernails. Pink lives lively, loudly and boldly in the shape of bubbles with her hands on her dancing hips, in the moment, in the spotlight. But she is also soft and pastel. She wants to be held, to be nurtured, to be loved. She is the delicate dyed shell of an Easter egg. One day, Blue told her, Pink is for girls, and I am for boys. Pink was confused by this because she thought she was for everyone, especially when she melts into the earth at sunset. But Pink will not give up. She will not stop living beautifully and suddenly, emphatically and lovingly, desperately and colorfully, in every season and every day, as all colors should do. It sways like the grass on a spring day. It is a song of oneness that envelops me. It has no shape. It is earthy green, deep and rich with dancing movement. It is not greedy or selfish. It longs for awareness, a connection, an unbreakable alliance with the universe. It is pause. Bleed purple. You walk all over Price Hill. Everything seems pretty chill. You see purple all around. Seems your head is spinning around and around. You hear cheers of the purple and the white, screaming that they will fight, fight, fight. But what are they truly fighting for? You want to find out some more. Spreading the spirit of the alma mater is what they do. Being proud no matter what they came into. That's how we all should be. Looked as little like sisters and brothers. No one more superior than the others. No one is better than the best. All becoming one is the true test. Turquoise moves in waves under the summer sun. It's the beach at sunset. It's midday cloudless blue, shouting, singing, dissolving anger and fear. 
Turquoise's heaven is a box of crystal beads. All creation, diamonds on the water. Magenta and chartreuse make pillows for turquoise's dreams. <gasps> to change. To move from then to this, from what little I know and the little I knew, to what may be known, sever, slice, surrender, slip, slide, slither and swish, look for clarity, live in the conundrum, change I never ask for yet always long for, succulent possibility, make more of much, Yet I savor the safety of now. Can I face discomfort, live in limbo, reeling from shock, for death comes too. Never known till done, never done. All goes, all comes, all changes. Feel it, fall into it, fly. Anger consumed until my daughter left. Lost a lot, later gained all. Long nights, tired school days, repeat. Relationships take work, I'd rather retire. Always get back on your horse. All different faces, one beating heart. Wasted small town city of confusion. Heads collide, arguments fume, love erupts. For sale. Goodbye, House of Memories. Autumn dandelion waiting for the wind. One falling drags hundreds with him. Crumply bag, afternoon snack, mostly air. Plenty of skills, body needs repair. Temporary pain, temporary pain leads to eternal joy. Enjoying sophomore year, but dreading graduation. Self-published website died, but still trying. Carter Bradley, things in our pockets. Lipstick, 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 Kara mix. Her lips, her lips, her lips, like wine. To me, they are just fine, just fine. He uses a small computer. That is a work of art. A Kroger car, he never leaves home without it. That's smart. Her eyes never dry from eye drips in the ride. Car keys used in a finder to find my car. Who needs it when I can run a mile with my Laura bar? <clears throat> Even though this poem seems hard to learn, it's not half bad, said Mr. Michael Burns. <laughs> Why do we carry the things that we carry? Do we have pockets to carry these things? Or do we carry them because we have pockets? I am often surprised by what I find in my pockets. Today, I was surprised to find everybody had the same things in their pockets. These are things that are never in my pockets. Journal, perfume, tiny walrus, Herkimer diamond, and carnelian. Give me time. Thank you. Those who come to my community refuse to make eye contact. With their Honda Accords and Priuses, they ride down my street terrified like new inmates walking down the hallway of a jail. They roll up their windows as fast as they can, trying to act calm, but we know better. They come through my neighborhood because Daddy thought he knew a shortcut to Grammy's house. They stick out like sore thumbs with their Bach blaring and cars clear of collision scars. We laugh when they urgently change radio stations from War 98 to 101.1 The Wiz. We laugh when they roll up their windows to cut off the stench of the piss in the sewer. We laugh simply because we are jealous. Mr. Bo on Vine does not have windows in his station wagon. Tyrese on Main does not even own a car where he doesn't have a job because he's been to jail three too many times and no one will hire him. Mrs. Johnson, whom is divorced but still requests the label of Mrs., can't stand to listen to classical music, for she claims she does not know what beauty is. 
It hurts your ears, that sugar plum fairy tune, and it hurts my heart knowing that she will die, knowing only the power of ugliness. The community itself, though, is not ugly. Many communities consider themselves families, and we are one of them. Mr. Bow on Vine has been sweet on Mrs. Johnson since before I was born, and he drives that old station wagon past her apartment every morning before work and every evening after work, just to see if she might be looking out her window. One day she'll be looking on out that window looking for me, he says, grinning with whatever teeth he has left in his mouth. I believe she will too, for Mrs. Johnson has been sweet on Mr. Bow for some years now. The problem is she doesn't want to cheat on the husband that divorced her ten years ago. Tyrese on Maine is Mrs. Tom Johnson's son, but they never talk anymore. Not since he was caught trying to rob the liquor store in Avondale, or maybe it was when he was busted for having eight ounces of cocaine stored in his couch. Either way, if you ask Mrs. Johnson if she has a son, she'll say, not one that I know of, and will go about her business. I myself live in what people call the gates of the ghetto, where you can hear the gunshots, but you won't get shot where you can hear the yelling, but you won't get yelled at. The buffer zone where police will park their vehicles knowing they won't get carjacked. So for those who want to come to my community, roll up your windows. Just know that some of us have no windows to roll up. Please play your nocturnes and your concertos as loud as you want. Some of us need to learn a different form of beauty, just as some of us need a clean slate. Some of us have made right decisions. All of us have made wrong decisions, causing some of us to end up here. But to those who venture here, know that we accept as much as we judge, and we've lost more than you have loved. Number one being thank you so very much for being here. Gave their time not just this weekend, but also in training to prepare for this weekend and or serving on the planning committee. And we don't have a lot to give, um, but we do have something small. It's a frame that we have for each of you outside. And it says, the universe is not made of atoms. It's made of tiny stories. Facts get recorded, stories get remembered. So we have these for each of you with a letter outside. You can grab as you're leaving. And I just want to thank you. And if you can join me again in thanking our writing mentors. I, I had an idea a year ago that um, Cincinnati is a weird place. I'm not from here. <laughs> and um, I noticed that it's a very divided community. And I thought if everybody had the gift of writing and hearing each other speak, that we might not be so divided, and that maybe some people who didn't realize how much worth they had inside would know their worth, and whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter, I do. Um, but all of your words were beautiful, and so I thank you all very sincerely for sharing the words. Um, had Claire not been the first person to say yes to my idea, this wouldn't have ha happened today. So I really like to thank Claire. I'm so sorry, I don't know what's happening to me right now. Um, but, and I mean, she's an organizational genius because I kind of, I'm like a wind, but I definitely like a wind that like, and so she's kind of like honed me in so I could be like caught by a sail and a ship could move forward instead of like sink into the ocean. And um, so I would love to, to um, give a big round of applause for Claire Blankemeyer.